<laughs> All right, this is Sean Wallace talking. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, yeah suck out, mate. Suck out. All right. That's what they. Sh- that's oh. what you should sound like. Do you know what I mean? Well, no, no. You know what? It's because he's more of the posh gangster. You know, the educated yeah, gangster. Very well spoken. Right. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. Oh, rubbish. It's like, have you got the keys of cocaine ready, sir? <laughs> we are not going to sell until we find my father. Yes, excellent. <laughs> Bloody hell, Nigel. What is going on here? This is not acceptable. Delivery estimated around tea time. Is that okay? <laughs> I think you're right. I don't think Billy sounds like that. No. no he's got a normal accent. <laughs> Billy. Billy. I think he's got a normal accent. He's got normal. He doesn't sound like that. Wait, did you say northern or normal? Northern. Northern. Really? Yeah. He's got like a slight northern accent. Anyway, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello, and welcome back to the Binge Podcast. Uh, this is episode three. I'm with Joel, Kamara, and Kane. What's up, What's everyone? Up? Hello, hello, what hello. Up? Hey. How's everyone doing? Good. Good. Um, it's been raining like mad. Like, what happened to summer? It was summer for like four days. It's English weather. That's it's what like happens. 30, 31 degrees. I was having picnics left, right, centre. Next now minute. It's cool. Boom. Honestly. Yeah, I think it's probably going to go up and down because is it next week that's meant to be nice again or something like that? Yeah, I, I don't know. So. I don't know. I don't know. I lose track. I'm not gonna lie to you. This lockdown's driving me crazy. Corona's still around, so <laughs> it's not like I'm going anywhere, anyways. <laughs> so <laughs> rain, shine, I don't care. <laughs> I don't know. True. My social life started picking up again, but then Leicester shut down. So, well, do you know what is picking up? West Ham, because last <laughs> night, all Bad my team. days, West Ham beat Chelsea. Yeah, sorry, Chelsea Bad fans team. out there, but you're rubbish, isn't it? So no, we're not sorry. We're not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so. It's fine because on the same day, <laughs> Arsenal four nil, Saka signed a thing. Next is a Yeah, but I'm not. You know, you. it was Norwich. So you know. Okay, but you're battling relegation, right? <laughs> well, oof, ouch. Let's not get into this. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Let's not get into this. All right. So to, to, to today's episode, all right, <laughs> is Gangs of London. Brat, brat, brat. <laughs> I reserve my right to have an opinion on this. <laughs> right, right. Well, Gangs of London is a show on Sky. It's brand new. It came out only, I think, a couple of months ago. Um, lots of talk bins going on about it. Everyone's excited when it first came out. Everyone's watched it by the sounds of it. What do you guys think? I personally didn't jump on the bandwagon that early. I heard really good things about it, like, the first week it came out. Then I checked it out, and the first episode was, like, an hour and a half, and I said, wow. So yeah. <laughs> after I watched the first episode, the violence caught me off guard, so I waited a little bit again. But then I got into it, and I finished the whole season quite quick. So That's straight away, because what Kine said, yeah. I was like, yeah, do you know what? This Gangs of London thing, it looks interesting. And I, that's like the kind of stuff I like, action and all that. But then I saw that episode <laughs> left and I thought, look, if you're not coming on a Game of Thrones level, then you know, I might have to be taking breaks in between watching it. And that's not called for on the first episode. I don't know about you guys, but I was thrown back really because Gangs of London, I was excited. I was thinking, okay, this is going to be a bunch of mandem in the city doing a madness. When I saw the trailer, I was like, okay, this isn't looking like a bunch of gangs that I would think, you know, would be in London. But it's interesting. So just before we start this episode, spoilers, guys, we're going to be tell- spoiling the whole thing. So be prepared <laughs> for that. But um, yeah, let me just say what briefly what the show is about and then we'll crack on. So you've got a head family of London, the Wallace family, partnership with the the Marnie family, who basically bring in all the money and kind of tell what the other gangs are doing, making sure there's all control in the city. Uh, what was it about five other gangs? And yeah, right. it all goes tits up 
when the head of the family, Finn Wallace, gets killed. Chaos, fights, gangs go against other gangs, and it's all about clearing it up, really. In a nutshell, yeah. Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the Wallace family. So you know, there's a few famous faces in there. You've got a few actors from Game of Thrones. So if any fans of Game of Thrones out there, a lot of faces from that. You've got the main guy, Finn Wallace, the guy who um, is the head of the family. He's a big actor, been in a lot of films. Then you've got the main character, Sean Wallace. Now, if anyone's familiar with Sean, he is in Piggy Blinders. Oh, yes. Mm. Old John, Johnny Boy. <laughs> uh, he's also been in Skins. Now, in Skins, he had a Cockney accent. In uh, Peaky Blinders, he had a Bromie accent. <laughs> and then this, I was thrown back. I'm not even going to lie to you. <laughs> I was thrown back. His accent was mad. What do you guys think of his accent? Personally, I never saw it coming, but... Um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not a really good one. Um, yeah, out, out of his accent, like is so distinctively he's like proper well spoken like it didn't really match what he wanted to accomplish i don't know if it's mm. for me so i couldn't take him seriously um but i don't know what do you guys think can't lie i got boris johnson vibes you know <laughs> like i really got go to work but stay at home stay at home <laughs> work take public transport but don't travel where you can please that's the kind of vibes like I was getting, real posh. But I get it at the same time because they're not exactly street level gangsters, are they? So that's no. why I guess it kind of matches what level of gangster they are. But yeah, it definitely spun me because having recently watched Peaky Blinders, it was a bit like, oh, okay, this is <laughs> this is definitely a bit different. Mm, mm. I think it kind of sets the scene though for the actual uh, series because immediately you expect the stereotypical you have got street gangs or you've got the cockney gangs and then boom they throw you with a little posh accent and you're just like oh okay then mm. um I'm, I'm, yeah that definitely threw me off to be honest with you but yeah sean wallace i mean <laughs> opening scene <laughs> he's doing an absolute madness like Mad. it's it's all upside down you're thinking oh, okay this is a nice landscape of the city. And then uh, <laughs> <laughs> it turns out there's a guy hanging upside down. Sean's not happy with him. No, Sean, Sean's crazy. But I think it really does um, introduce you to the type of person he is. Mm. So, Emotional. <laughs> he's impulsive. I think it threw me off a little bit, to be fair. I think when we're talking about his accent and then that happening, it just threw me off. I was like, hmm? so, but yeah, no. I think he's an interesting character to say the least. Well, setting a guy on fire, <laughs> hanging up <laughs> <upside laughs> down, <laughs> <the> building, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pleading for his life. Like, it was pretty like... powerful opening scene, though. I mean, like, you know, the first thing you see is a guy hanging from a building, like you said, pleading for his life, and then boom, <laughs> sets the rock on fire, Mm-mm-mm. and then man just drops from skyscraper. You know, in it, like. To me, that's like, okay, boom, we're ready. No, you could no. say this guy was toast. Bruh. Oh. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> uh. Silence is when you don't really know what to do. Oh, that's <laughs> okay. Sorry, 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 that was a burn. Bruh. <laughs> oh. Oh wow, he's going to double slam. Say the fly out, magnet, bro. Like, like you should have been out. Listen, it's a gift. It's a gift. What can I say? I just ah. Uh, that right. silent said it all, bro. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> but, okay, so the Wallace family—they're they're the big family of the city. Everyone looks to them when they want to do a movement in the city. You've got the five top gangs. So, okay, so you've got the other gangs. You've got um, you've got the Albanians. You've got the Kurdish, you've got the Pakistanis, you've got the Nigerians, and then you've got the Wallaces, yeah, who are joined with the Damani family. So Ed Damani and Finn Wallace, the two heads of those families, they're like best mates. So there you go. But yeah, so obviously 
we find out the reason why Sean set someone on fire is because he's pretty upset about something that happened to his dad. Poor old Finn. Flipping hell, man. Like, mm-mm. It was like them type of moments where you know something's coming. Like, I didn't know. Okay, I knew they were going to show it, but I was like, should I keep my eyes open? Should I close my eyes? Like, look at <laughs> Because I know someone's about to get shot in the face. But, and it's just mad. Like, yeah, because at the start, I, I like, at the beginning, when you see it, you think, oh, like, he doesn't deserve it, man. He's probably like going to check someone. Like, you know, it's un- it's so uncalled for. But, boy, as you watch on, you'll see, it. Boy, it's definitely lived up to the violent, boy. A bear people said to me, man, it's mad violent. But I think that scene and the first scene really set up. I was like, rah. So. Yeah, well, I mean, what threw me that he was still alive? Yeah, with the bag of money. <laughs> with the bag of money, like. When he got up, yeah, I was like, go on. Like, I was like, fight for your life, bro. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it was a bit peak for him. But, I mean, yeah, so obviously Finn Wallace gets killed. Now, that throws everything off because obviously if the Wallace family are ahead, he runs everything. I'm not like, these other gangs don't care. No. Do you know what I mean? As long as they're getting their peas, that's what matters yeah. to them. Do you know what I mean? Now, now the, the head, the king, you could say, has gone. Everyone's going to want a piece of that throne. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's going to want a piece of of uh, being the boss man. But being in the fam and everything, it falls straight down to the eldest son, which was uh, Mr. Sean Wallace. Yeah. I mean, if I was in business with them and I saw the way Sean was moving, I would not be confident either. At all. Because <laughs> he was an right. emotional mess, like... Even the funeral is moving like an insane person. Like, I get it. Your dad's dead and everything, but you're here trying to fill a seat that you really can't fill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I can't lie to you. If I'm like a head of a rival gang, yeah, I'm sitting there thinking, fam, this small boy, you want exactly. to bark in one of that meat, guys? Exactly. I'll get my man to wrap you up <laughs> and then the rest That's of true. you. It's long now. Like, the main guy, the brains behind everything, is dead. Yeah. So, if there was ever a time for you to not get too big for your boots, is mm-hmm. now because mm-hmm. <laughs> there's bare like there's bare gags, and if they all join together and decided, oh, you know, we want to get rid of it's the like Wallaces, finish. they can't be done. <laughs> well, it just shows you the respect that the Wallace family have got. So obviously, yeah. just before the funeral actually starts, they're sitting around a table. You got Sean at the head of the table. Do you get what I mean? And you've got Ed on the other side of the table, Ed Damani, mm-hmm. and you've got all the gang leaders around the side of the table, like some kind of godfather scene or something. And mm. uh, they're all straight away talking business. They're not even, they're not even considering the, the fact that Finn's dead. They're like, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do that. I'm making sure they've got their peas. And then mm. Ed, Ed Damani as well, he's supposed to be... His best friend, you know, isn't it? Exactly. He's like, yeah, yeah, okay. And then Sean's like, hold on. Nah, we ain't doing nothing. And obviously they all looked at him thinking, who's this you? Who's this you? And I'm telling him what to do. He's like, no, 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 no. Until we find the killer of my dad, then we'll start talking business. And I think that probably sets the kind of start of the series. Yeah, it does. Like, And I think it just shows the business that they're in. Like, If you're dead, you're dead, innit? Still need to, we're still about this money. Fam, that hundred percent. When man said the tap stays off, you know what was going through my head? If you worked in a nine to five, bro, you just take annual leave, yeah. So you, know you should have done. You should have taken annual leave and then let the demandies deal with the business. And then when you're ready and finished morning, you come back to the table. I f- yeah, I was gonna say. I think the problem with all of it, just from that scene when they're all sitting at the table, is he brought his emotion to the table. Mm. Like we get. Even like your dad has died, your dad, like your dad's the head of the family. But him coming in and doing that, it was just kind of like, like he was basically disregarding everything that the Domani's were doing. They were kind of setting up like, okay, this is the plan that we're gonna go by until you know, X, Y, and Z. He comes and said, Nah, scrap that. Who killed my dad? Who killed my dad? That's what he was doing. It is, isn't it? He's like, he's like, he's like, calm down, calm down, mate. All right. Let's let's be let's be sensible about this. But I mean, that probably showed his maturity, and maybe it was kind of his fault in ways and why things went a bit crazy, because he so. just straight away showed that you know the negativity, the emotional side of it. You know, treat business business and treat the other thing the other thing. Like they're not your they're not your friends, bro. For real. 
don't like, know. They don't care. You know, but I mean, let me bring up a character, guys. Elliot. Hmm. <laughs> I, th- <laughs> I mean, this guy's brave. I mean, he just turns out out of nowhere. When he first when he first appeared, I thought he was like a henchman or something or part of the gangs or something. But he just rocked up and just kind of appeared. Yeah. <laughs> he got himself and he just lied straight up. He was like, Oh yeah, I know your dad. So, oh okay, cool. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, what do you want us to do? <laughs> do you know what he reminds me of? He's like oh, I don't Jackie Chan. He's a ninja bro. I was gonna say, like, he's like Arya from Game of Thrones, like he just <laughs> appeared and started doing a madness and just killing people. That is mm. that is like the equivalent that I can think of, like just came from nowhere, just started slaying people like it was a cash day. Like, he's... Do you know, let me not even get into it, but it's mad. His introduction was sick. No, in the pub. His his introduction was sick. And I think that is there in the first episode. That's what made people think, nah, Gangs of London's mad. Mm -hmm. Because he rocks up, okay? So he pretends, all right, yeah, I knew your dad. We clock that he's actually undercover fed. Mm -hmm. Then... He goes into the pub, clocks the Albanians in there, and then there's like a link maybe to his dad or to Finn Wallace. Long story short, uh, Sean's people just goes crazy. And like, what? They're in there? I say nothing. I just go in there and <laughs> do a madness. He's like, bro, they're going to smash you up, which they did. So what does he do? He goes in there, and I was not expecting this. I like <laughs> It looked like a scene out of Kingsman. I think I said that when I watched it. It looked like oh, Kingsman. Like, the fight scene was ridiculous. And how long? It was actually pretty long. That was sick. It was, it was the cinemat- cinematography was good. Yeah. I applaud that. No, it was sick. I was going to say, it reminds me of the film Raid. I don't know if you guys have seen it. But like <laughs> the whole film is him running through every room, fighting every man in the room. That yeah. is what it is. HD reminded me of, and I was just like, bro. I felt like I was watching the, fi- I was watching a film. I forgot it was a show. Yeah, like, I just forgot. I was just like, bro, he's a really. No, no you're bang on. You're bang on because that the director of Ray directed this. Oh, hey. So yeah. So you got the eye there, but no, for real. Like the fight scene was 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 sick. Like I wasn't expecting it. So you, I've got it on, and I'm like, oh, hold on. I was like, go on, bro. He's like he's using like everything around him. He's got some beer glass and everything. He's just breaking necks left, right, and center. Like <laughs> I'm thinking myself, hold on, you're just supposed to be some <laughs> random detective. Now you're like Jet Li. Like, <laughs> but this is why I just thought, fam, really? Because my man, um, what did he say? He said it was something like, oh, um, because Sean said to him, what, th- thirteen of them, and he was like, yeah, well, um. I, I had a dart, <laughs> and it was like, sorry, I had a dart, okay. <laughs> like, you say it as if to say you walked in with a bazooka, bro. You had a dart. You know that if you throw a dart in someone's hand, it won't even pierce their skin unless you throw it really hot. So it's like, man had man was moving like he had tools. It was a good introductory to his character because it wasn't the first, it wasn't the only fight scene, like it was just the first of many of Elliot. Yeah, so, or in the first tip. So this is the first episode alone. Maybe that's why it was bare long. Mm-hmm. But the other fight scene you had was with that weird butcher man. Yeah. <laughs> I think myself, bro, like, you just, <laughs> I'm not having a good week. <laughs> no. Like, <laughs> no way in real life would you survive that. Like, no, no, no never, way. Never. You've what? got that guy was massive. Guy yeah, he was massive. Just, just waving knives at you, bro. I'm thinking <laughs> myself. The whole no. scene was just a puzzle. Like... My man enters the room. Next minute, this man coming with the machete knife. It is just wild. I tell you what, I give props to the people that uh, designed the set because that room looks scary. Yeah, it looks disgusting. You, you can smell I mean? it. it mad. Yeah, you can smell it from the look. It was disgusting. No, trust, trust. Them fight scenes be epic. Well, I mean, other fights. You've got um, so you've got the Kurdish. So the head of the Kurdish is uh, Lale. Mm-hmm. So she's got a bit of an emotional background, which is linked to Azif, which is the leader of the Pakistani gang. So they've got their own beef. And I mean, this is where I get a bit sidetracked. I don't know about you. So it's called Gangs of London. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, is it, is it though? Yeah, I mean, is it though? 
international so you've got, baby. It just goes all bit side trip from here, really. So you've got the Kurdish fighting the Pakistanis, and then you don't know who's bad or good, but you, well, I guess we find out that it's, you know, the Kurdish are secretly good. Mm-hmm. Um, even though they're criminals, I don't know if that makes sense. And then, like, as if he's got his son. So he's, so he's where if trying to gain order, his son is running for mayor. Yeah, man. Now, I mean, <laughs> that's some um, smart thinking. Mm. It is. Mm. It's tactical. You want, to, you want to run a city? Okay. Son, yeah. be mayor. It's, it's a bit unfortunate because his son genuinely wanted to be a mayor for different reasons. But, you yeah. know, the power of money. Not everyone can follow in their father's footsteps, you know? Exactly. The power of money. That didn't sit well with me. No. Because I feel like, I feel like, as if was on this crime thing, but the son was more like, fam, like, I'm just trying to be mayor. Good. <laughs> yeah. So then it was kind of like, the dad is like, yeah, but me and my guys in it, me and my guys. And it's like, no, fam, like, I'm just trying to do good. Like, that is it. He generally, like, he generally was trying to do good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because he didn't even want to be at the fam. Remember, he attended the meet, the Godfather meeting at the beginning because his yeah. dad was able to go, and he was like, "Look, tell them I won't here because I'm not, I'm not here Mountain. for any of it." Yeah, yeah, he's probably sitting at that table thinking, "Why am I here?" Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> I just, you know, shitting bricks. But I mean, so the Damani family. So obviously, their boys are the Wallaces. Um, so Ed has a son called Alex. So he runs all the financial sides of the company, the Wallace company. Then he has a daughter, Shannon, with her as a little you. Another group of people that we ain't mentioned is the uh, it's the Welsh travellers. So obviously the people at the beginning that killed Finn were Welsh and they were part of um, uh, these Welsh travellers. Now, it was a bit random and weird that these two who looked like drug addicts who needed a good wash who killed Finn this big the biggest gangster in in London you know for no reason it was like why did you kill him yeah. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean so the hunt was when they finally found out that it was these travellers it was like okay but why do you get what I mean like why have you done that and it turns out they didn't have a clue who he was apparently mm-hmm. it's crazy because even they didn't know why they did it and like remember as well they killed the driver well they didn't kill him they almost killed the driver too so it was just a big yeah puzzle. and that's uh i think that's when we find out a little bit more information really of who who the bad guys are because so the driver survived but he was missing at the end or i think the second episode or something like that the driver's sitting on the sofa bleeding out looking rough ed walks in and it basically, we find out that Ed knew about everything and is behind everything and makes Joe... Is it His name was Joe, I think, kill himself. Or did yeah. he kill him or did he kill himself? He killed him. He gave him that tea and then the guy's arm was all paralysed. And he slit it. And then he slit his wrist and then just left him there. It made him look like so sad. Yeah. Yeah. That Ed is a smart man. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Don't know where yeah. that comes from, but he's a smart man. So he was game of thrones as well. Yeah. Was he? Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, egghead Ed. You don't remember? <laughs> no? He was that pirate, man, that loved uh, prostitutes, isn't it? Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. What really spun me is when they did kill Finn, It, I like the way how they played it out because it looked like it was an accident. Mm. Like, it looked like, oh, no, we just came to rob the joint. And then it just so happens someone is now there and like the boys just kind of panicked and made a bad choice. Mm. So then to find out that actually <laughs> it was planned mm-hmm. was kind of like, mm. it, it, it was, it was a good like deflection because it did not seem like it was a planned hit. Mm. Not at all. So it turns out, so to piece these last, these little bits together. So Ed, and the people that he was working with hired these two young Welsh travellers who had no clue to about anything to kill Finn, used them because they were just nobodies. 
then got the Albanians to take the driver and keep him just in case. And so did a side deal with the Albanians. And then uh, basically Elliot come along and messed it all up. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Being Batman did, and finding out where he was and da 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 So, yeah. So, I mean, and then what's it called? Kenny. So, Kenny is the leader of the Welsh Travellers. When he finds out what his son and his son's mate's done, he was pissed. Because he was just mm. like, what have you done? Mm, all like, why have you brought this, this chaos, this yeah. nonsense to our people, oh. man? It's a death sentence. It is. Yeah. Honestly, it's a death sentence. For all of them. Not even just yeah. them, for the whole... The whole killed everyone. Yeah. The whole just, just for breathing. <laughs> just for breathing. You, just, you, you killed us all. Because if, if I was his dad, the way I would be... Do you know I'd just kill him. Trust. I'd say, do you know what? I will kill him for you. Bring him to Trust. Sean. Trust. Yeah. Let me just kill him. Done. At the end of the day... I think he very much saw it for what it is. It's like, look, son, now that you've done this, it's street law that you have to die, okay? So instead of me just allowing them to kill you or just allowing you to die, let me at least see if begging for your life can... Well, it wasn't really begging. <laughs> it was more like a demand. <laughs> it was more like, don't kill my son, innit? Otherwise... <laughs> It's not it, but he knew. He knew. Yeah, he knew well, was dead. You can't get to them. Yeah, like, you can't. Yeah, I was gonna say. What's mad is that prior to that, we've got the whole. Obviously, it was him. So it was his son and the friend. But then they killed the the friend. Yeah, he was dead in the beginning. Like, so yeah. why would you just frame it on the friend and say he did it? I think it was peak. They clocked obviously because um, the driver was alive. They knew it mm-hmm. was two people and da, 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 da. So obviously, going back to that scene where Elliot was doing a madness with the butcher, that was when the, that this random butcher guy oh. was was mashing up uh, the friend, the friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like they got he got mashed up. Man. He was do dead. What, I'm saying? Mm-hmm. what would you do, yeah, if that was your son? If your child did such a madness and <laughs> They've just ruined your life, basically, and everyone's and everyone's life around you. Would you abandon your son, like on a serious level? Obviously, I don't have the kids, so I was just chatting crap. But when it comes down <laughs> to it, yeah, I think I would have done what he did. Like you would protect your child to the to your last breath. Like even though everyone else out there is dying, collateral damage in it. My child, I want them to survive, so I will do whatever it takes. I guess, and I think he did that to the best of his ability. I think he did really well. Like to be honest, I know. Like like Kene, I was chatting the most. Like you know, I, I wouldn't. You know, I'd I'd be out here doing Tomb Raider, <laughs> flying through rooms. I don't know. I'd be doing what I need to do, but look, I'll be telling him, look, you effed up. Yeah. And you got us in this situation. Now we now you're gonna help us get out. We're gonna find a way to get out of this. And it does. But I think it, exactly. Like I think he definitely. Like Kene said, he protected him to his last breath. He did... Oh. <laughs> Look, I'm he proud did. of what happened. Even though, the, even though the situation, you know, the outcome... Mm, but, I mean, overall, he did good. Yeah, I mean... You only really have two options in that situation, you know? And I think that's where parenting really comes in. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not a parent. But this is where you really see, if your parent gives a shit about you <laughs> because you either sacrifice him because let's be honest he could have killed him and then been like to sean all right boom mm. i killed him for you i didn't want him to go through pain yes that's a kind of parent kind of love kind of thing going on but at the same time you just killed your son bro so that, it's not I nice mean, that's peak. well no because there's another thing that they could have done which is just gone after sean because personally i feel like I would have been like, all right, I know that my child has already signed the whole generation's <laughs> death sentence. So instead of going out like a chicken and running, let's just call all the man them. Let's go to Sean's place and try and shoot up the whole block. Sure. And then if they die, we live. If yeah. they have, we die. 
get them you. first before they get you, man. Yeah. Like, you know that, that, that bully that comes up to you and gives you a manners before he even says one thing, you just bang him in the yeah. face. Yep. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm not even giving you the time or day, brother. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, but these lot were chilling in their caravans, living life. Like, he knew they were going to come for him. That's what I don't get. Like, you knew what, the minute you left Sean's table, he was going to come for you. So why are you chilling at home, like, relaxing? Well, that's it, yeah. Like, he made his decision because <laughs> once, <laughs> once he showed face and was Boy. like, don't touch my son, bruv, <laughs> it was because they just rocked up to his, his caravan site and they just shot up the place. Nah, he said, you light know it I mean? all off. Like, he just oh. said... Fire. Like, mm-hmm. it just it was peak, man. Like mm-hmm. that scene was sick though. Do you know what I mean? Everyone died. Everyone horses, like that was oh. so mad. Everything was getting blown up. The thing is, men didn't even have a last supper. <laughs> like you know you're gonna die. Do you know what I would have done, yeah? That scene where he came to Sean and was like, Don't touch my son. I would have sat down, I would have got the uh the <laughs> napkin, put it around my neck, I would have ordered the most expensive thing. Just because you know, bro, you, you are not going to live. So really? at least enjoy, you know, let your taste buds rejoice. Or I'll say that, man, you, man, let's go hack a son. You know? let's, let's have that short beef rib. And then we can talk about who's going to kill who. But the scene was, man, the scene was crazy. The way how they just, oh my God. I don't know. It, it was, was bombs. It was guns. It was everything. Mm. Like... And you know what? Let the record show. He survived that as well. Like, yeah, that, he did well. <laughs> he, did, he went Every across the country. Bullet wound. He must have Trust. some kind of military experience. Yeah, because I'm surprised. So I really thought he'll be done real quick, but mm. he like survives all odds. My man's going through, like, can I say, through cross country, <laughs> jumping in people's car, rubbing people's car, all that things. So. I mean, I he like respect in it. He he was fighting and t- fighting survival like <laughs> at all costs. Like, as you said, he was going cross country. My guy had some <laughs> some like I don't know some ingredients on his stomach, some moss stuffing. or something to cover his oh, wound. Oh, yeah. Lifts it up, some giant worm is oh, wigging yeah. out of his belly, man. I was like, oh, bro. And he pulled pulled it out. When he pulled it out, I thought he was gonna eat it. Uh, the way he was looking at it, I thought he was gonna suck it up and be like, "Oh, nah. From that minute, yeah, I would disown my son. Can't lie. I'd be like, "Darren, bro, oh, what have you? I've got worms at my belly, oh, man. Like, honestly. what have you done?" But I mean, this is what's a bit mad now. So he, so when he kind of like gains consciousness or whatever from the massive attack on his caravan site. These random, so he's like crawling up the the hill in the woods, and you see like these uh these two people rock up, this man and woman, uh speaking Dutch. Hmm. So I was thinking to myself, okay, so who are these guys? Um, and they like start hunting him down. So as he's going through his cross country, he's robbing cars, he's hiding in places, trying to get to where his son was the whole mm-hmm. time yeah. in some random house in the middle of nowhere he he was getting chased and hunted by these uh these dutch militia um so that that was mad because i'm not gonna lie this was my favorite episode yeah so I think me too. this was episode five yeah this was my favorite episode because so it's just a survival of and you just think are they gonna survive <laughs> and then when they finally gets to the house you see darren there and He's with this this lady, and it's actually an ammunition factory, like a secret mm, one. Yeah. And they've got, she's got her own little crew of teenagers, and da 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 da. Darren's staring at the window, and that guy's like, "Darren, get out the window! What are you doing, man?" And he's like, "Dad, dad, yeah, bro." And then flip him a whole army. <laughs> it's just this militia <laughs> of <laughs> of Dutch. No, oh, they just spray up the thing. Like, like, innocent kids that got shot. Honestly, oh. I felt so sorry for the woman, man. Me too. Do you, know what? Looking... Do you know what I felt really bad about as well is you know she clocked that the bullet that she he um that Darren used to kill Finn was actually one of her bullets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And she was because I remember she kept answering who like she kept saying who did he kill? Who yeah, did he kill. When she put two two, she knew it was a rat. She knew, yeah. She knew it was a rat. She knew they were dead. No. 
Yeah, for me, the scene was mad. Very Call of Duty like. <laughs> like, very Call of Duty. Man's doing grenades, man's <laughs> doing, oh yeah, get on the rooftop and then <sighs> throw some more grenade and then rappel down. And can you fam. imagine? People were shooting like to the minute they fell, like, fell dead. Like, nah, I was <laughs> glued. My eyes were glued to the TV, yeah, because I was thinking, nah, this is <laughs> sick, man. Like, the house they was in. She they was trying to get shot up and she was like, pull the lever or whatever it yeah. was. And then pull down the lever, all these like metal shots come down on the windows and doors and that. And it's like, right, this is a fortress. So they're, they're shooting back with some whatever they've got. And you just think, right, okay, so this is a serious like battle. Do you get what I mean going on here? Obviously, bare their people die, but what they've got obviously is the fortress, isn't it? And they're fighting yeah. back as much as possible. The Dutch hold fire. And they're like, cool, go around there, go around there. Da, 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 da. And as you said, Joel, yeah, bruv, they try getting through the chimneys, but they put bombs there. I was thinking, insane. I'm playing Call of Duty. Right now. Yeah, like, insane. <laughs> I'm telling this war zone. It's Call of Duty war zone, fam, because <laughs> even where, like, it was peak because there was moments where, obviously, she, so the key thing here is that she clocks. Look, you, man, these men are military. Like, mm-hmm. they know they're tinging it. So she's like, everyone, get inside, get inside. <laughs> All these kids are standing there shooting. She's trying to get them inside. And as they're coming inside, <sighs> they are getting peppered. Nah. Left, right, and centre. And she's <laughs> yeah. literally watching her kids Dying, die. Yeah. As, yeah. as she's trying to defend them at the same time. But then everyone gets in. And then obviously that's when they bring the shutters down. And you think, yeah, they're safe, man. They're safe. <laughs> but then... <laughs> uh, oh, I I feel sorry for uh, that Don that was upstairs. Yeah. There was one of her kids that was upstairs and he had the gun and then he literally turned around and bah! and then all you hear is pa, 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 pa. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, rah, I'm sure he was dead after the first shot. Like, nah, nah. <laughs> These lot were lighting everyone up. I was going to say, do you know what took me out and I knew this was the real deal when they took the ladder out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 they took the ladder out yeah, and they came prepared. The they cut it out, they don't. <laughs> they came prepared. <laughs> No, it's peak. But like now, one of the sickest things is when just as they start shooting the house. So I was thinking, I was thinking, bro, this guy's thinking is quick and it's mad because his guy is right. standing by the window. Yeah. And he like rugby tackles him through the window so they can get in the house quick. Like, who thinks like that that quickly? That to get what I'm saying, he just goes, boom, no hesitation, just takes his boy through the window so they're like safe in the house. I thought, nah, okay, cool. And then like yeah, as you said upstairs, Joel, like he got the bag and uh, threw it down because they were trying to blow up the front door in it. And he just mm. threw it down with some explosives and they just, I know he must have been some, that Dutch soldier must have been someone <laughs> because one of the Dutch ladies, she was crying where she was like, no. Oh, yeah. Was, was it her husband uh, or her brother? I don't know. I actually, I, he looks young. That, she looked her, older, that you know, lit up herself. something in her, like, that's when she was like, oh, now it's time to go. Like, she was... <laughs> she was, was in it. No, she that, was that episode just blew my mind. Like, I've, I it took so much violence in that one episode. Like... Yeah. Well, the whole episode was about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And obviously, he's driving all that whole house, and then finally, they go through the tunnels underground, and all that's boat. left is, is Kenny and his son, Darren. They're trying to get to a boat. And then I think his name is um, Leif, Leif, the, the 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 guy who's head of the Dutch militia. Yeah, follows him down there and just long story short kills him. That's the, end off, of the Welsh, that's the end of the Welsh travelers, man. I thought no. who did that. And then I was like, no, he has to get to the boat. But when the guy from the boat died, I said, no, it's finished. Now the Dutch play a huge part because mm-hmm. you think, okay, who the hell are these SWAT? army madness guys that are just causing, you know, hectic. So at the end of that scene, when he kills Kenny and, and Darren, like he gets a call from, um, uh, what's his name? Is it Javid? Jav- yeah. yeah. Oh, him too. Oh, Javid. Oh, Javid. Oh, Javid. Yeah, Javid. Yeah. And, uh, and the guy from the yeah? Yeah, yeah, that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I knew he looked familiar. <laughs> he was like, he said, I've got another job for you. And it's another son. And the only thing you can think of is obviously Sean, Sean Wallace. Um, so I don't know about you guys, but if you didn't realise, the episodes kind of jump between times. Mm-hmm. So like things were happening at the same time as something else. And da, 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 da. 
So there was a point where Sean was meeting up with the Albanian. So this Albanian brother, right? He approaches Sean to try and cause, to try and arrange some peace or something. So they're meeting in the street. And then all you see is this like little red dot appear on Sean's face. Do you know what I mean? And you think, what? Oh, my days. That's the... Bro, that's, that scene there. So Sean's best henchman, some tall brother, he <laughs> he uh, pushes him out of the way and his head comes clean off. Right at the I minute mean, when he was about to snitch on Elliot as well. Trust. Yeah. Like, trust, because yeah. he finds out Elliot's fed, doesn't he? Yeah. No. Uh, After he made Elliot torture so many people. See, from that point, I thought, I thought the Albanians were setting him up, but then yeah. it couldn't have been because... The Albanians, the Wallaces, all that were all shooting back at this one sniper that was just picking everyone off like it was nothing. You know what I mean, some turkey shoot boy. People's heads were just coming Exploding. off. Like oh, it was peak. Yeah, that scene was lit. I can't lie because it was very much like you just didn't expect. And the thing is, you thought it was well. I don't know about you guys, but I thought it was Luan. Mm, yeah, I I thought, do. Right. Luban, is this what you're doing to these man, fam? And sure. the thing is, you came with confidence, opening up your jacket and being like, yeah, I haven't got anything <laughs> on me. And then you've got a guy behind you just picking people off. But <laughs> to be honest, it was, yeah. I mean, he's, he's definitely a sharpshooter. Because yeah. and I don't yeah. know what bullets he had in that no, man, because they ain't no, no. Bullets, bro. Imagine Trust. being in the middle of a conversation at night in an alley, yeah. And then someone's head just explodes in your face. Nah, that's disgusting. <laughs> no, imagine just standing there and you just see a red dot on your you just see a red dot on your head. <laughs> These lot, yeah, just how you know. These lot are on job because I would not sacrifice my head for Sean Wallace. But I'd be like, look, nah, if that I saw be... a red dot like that, I'd probably uh, wet myself because I'd just be <laughs> I'd think shit, like, what can you do? There's a red dot on you, you're you're done. No, you know you're, what I mean? you're you're done. But the way this guy's head got come off, he's 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 his head turned into a punch bowl, bro. It was just a, a bowl of of blood. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. But I mean, yeah, we find out it was the Dutch who was who was trying to assassinate Sean. So which followed off obviously from him doing the madness to the travelers. Then that didn't work out. So what's he do? The lady that was pissed because her lover or whoever <laughs> he was got blown up to pieces, she rocks up to the Wallace's house and pretends mm. to be a waitress mm-hmm. and tries killing Sean as well. Wow, yeah, she she was reckless, man, because it was like, how many against her? Yeah, well, yeah. she didn't care, really. Yeah, she, she didn't like, care. you know what, I don't like to live for anymore. Turns out that's not true. Turns out she does. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? God, like, this guy was that amazing. Was he like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but... It just shows. You know what I didn't understand? Like, why did the why do they have some dog, some pet old dog yeah. that followed them around? Yeah. yeah, that was weird. <laughs> that was weird. I don't know. I just Maybe don't understand was... why she even attempted to be honest, because you're like the thing is, yeah. Obviously, so the house thing happened after the alleyway scene, yeah. Because um, what's his name again? Elliot. Elliot. Because obviously Elliot now takes a bullet for Sean because mm-hmm. that's when I think we kind of realise Sean is not about it. No. Because Sean <laughs> literally looks shell-shocked. Like, <laughs> he looks so scared and out of his element. And then Elliot obviously kicks in with his cape and his Batman costume <laughs> and then rugby tackles him out of the way, but then gets hit. So they're trying to take the bullet out. Why would that be an appropriate time <laughs> to now try and finish Sean off? I get it. Obviously, they're distracted and all that. Yeah. But fam, they got lucky. Yeah, so they lucky. Sure got lucky. But I mean, as well, the, to the Dutch, bro, they are doing everything because you also find out that Leif has got some weird dungeon with a lady who's pregnant. You know what I mean? Locked up. In this weird dungeon, and he's got some old granny. I think it's it might be his nan. Mum, isn't it? Looking after yeah. her. She's so creepy. I was mm. just like, I was lost. I think from that point there, I was like, who are the bad guys? These guys just come out of nowhere, and they're doing a madness. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I thought that too, because when the pregnant lady appeared, it just started getting a bit confusing. 
because mm. I was just like, eh? Like, what? And then, yeah. Yeah, and the, yeah, it was just a lot. But again, it all unravels. Yeah. yeah. No, it like it's a bit... Go on. No, go on, go on. I feel like it was a bit confusing though as well because it's like they introduced the Dutch and it was like, okay, like we're quite late on in the season now. <laughs> yeah. And then you suddenly just introduce these random people that are killing everyone. They got some random pregnant lady in the basement. And it's like, huh? Like, you didn't even give us any droplets, mm-hmm. you know, at, at the beginning to give us an inkling. It was so random for me. Mm. Mm. That's all we have time for today. We will be continuing Gangs of London for our part two episode next week as we have loads to talk about. Stay tuned and thanks for listening to The Binge Podcast. Don't forget to follow us on all socials. Just find The Binge Pod UK and subscribe. Thanks.